Hi, welcome back. Um, oh, I'm always covering up my mic with my hands and I think that it affects the audio and I don't think anyone cares, truly. I don't think any of you care. Hi, so today we're doing something a little bit different. It's been a minute, it's been a minute since I've been here. Um, a bunch of random stuff. I have like a bunch of updates. I'm basically just gonna like get ready. Nothing planned exactly. I'm gonna be just doing my makeup, bruh. And I'm gonna give you some updates. We're gonna chat about some things that have been on my mind and that's about it. So get strapped in if, uh, if you're interested. If not, bye. <laughs> okay. I am currently listening to Renaissance because I saw Beyonce a few days ago and it was the best day of my entire life. I'm gonna start off with primer. Um, I'm using the All Nighter Urban Decay. I've had a wild, I've had a wild week to be totally honest with you. Um, if you like monitor my community post at all ever, then you would know that Ziva had, uh, my cat Ziva had like a little, um, little health scare. She had a UTI, which apparently is very common in tabby cats. I'd never had that happen before. So it was new to me. Um, and I was very like freaked out about it, but it resolved itself fairly quickly, which was nice because I was freaking out, man. I was freaking out. And then I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of Mac Radiance underneath my eyes. I used Tatcha water cream for my face and then for underneath my eyes, like when I, after I washed my face, I just used a little bit of the um, dewy skin cream. So I'm pretty well hydrated, but. So anyway, that was just like kind of stressful for me. Um, obviously it's a pet. She's my first cat that I've ever like owned on my own. So like I'm fully responsible for her health and safety. So that was just stressful. And luckily it only lasted like a few days um, or for her, it was like a day and a half, but the stress of it, you know? And then I had a little health scare after that, <laughs> like right after. Um, so that just like kind of sucked in general. I don't like, I just don't really think that there's any like problem with talking about it. So like I'm gonna, cause it doesn't, it just doesn't really matter to me. I feel like those things, like certain things, I don't know, people have their opinions. I have like a weird, I, think I have like this weird separation that happens for me for whatever reason. Like the numbers on YouTube don't compute. So when I look at like how many subscribers I have, or even just like the amount of views, I'm not, I don't, I still don't feel like anyone is watching this. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why, but regardless, um, I had a little health thing. I ended up in the ER. I posted about it on threads. If anybody follows me on threads, I don't know who the fuck is still doing that, but um, I ended up in the ER for chest tightness. Uh, which, duh, I mean like, hello, chest tightness, kind of a big deal. It's a whole long story. I started getting chest tightness like maybe two weeks ago now and it lasted for, well, I still have it, but when I got, when I started experiencing it, I definitely started to get like anxiety about it, like anxiety on top of it, because it's like, hello, this could be, you know, a serious like health thing that came seemingly out of nowhere. So I started to like experience these kind of like dizzy spells where I was, I don't want anybody, um, diagnosing me by the way in the comments just so you know like if you leave any kind of like diagnosis any diagnosis i'm not going to even interact with it because <laughs> i've already been to the, like three different doctors so i'm trying the new euphoria foundation i haven't tried it yet it seems kind of thick um i'm mixing two colors a little bit of the lighter one i don't know yeah it's very thick anyway so i ended up in the emergency room the day before that was a thursday and I went to two different urgent cares because I accidentally, I like um, spoke to someone at my hospital and they made, they like did the little like save my spot, which doesn't really mean anything. Save my spot, save my spot doesn't mean anything because they take you based on, obviously they take you based on like severity. And also I think who gets there first, it's like similar to the ER. Um, luckily because I had chest tightness and those are like, serious symptoms or potentially very serious symptoms. They took me right away, which was nice. But anyway, so she made me a, um, she made me an appointment or I'll save my spot for this urgent care. And I looked up the urgent care name, which is just like the location and the urgent care. And it said new location. 
It's a new location. And I was like, oh shit, did they move? So this is too orange. I'll make it work. Um, I'm going to mix a little bit more of the light one in. Anyway, so I was like, I didn't even question. I was like, oh, they must have moved because this is the name of the urgent care that I've been to before. And I got there and I was like, this seems kind of weird. Like, I don't know. It just seems like so different. And then they took, they, when I got there, the woman was like, do you have an appointment? And I was like, uh, yep, for two o'clock. And I like gave her my name. She didn't say anything. Like didn't tell me like absolutely no, you don't have an appointment. <laughs> so I just filled out the paperwork that seemed strange that I was filling it out because I've definitely filled it out before and didn't ask any questions and whatever. Uh, so yeah, that was just stupid on my part. I accidentally went to the wrong urgent care, um, but it was covered by my insurance, thankfully. So it was only like 75 bucks, which I realize is not cheap, but it's a hell of a lot better than like alternatives. And I saw that doctor and then it was just like a very quick, it was very quick. And then he was like, he sent me down the street to a lab to get like blood drawn. And I got to the lab and everything just felt like weird. The whole situation just felt weird. Like something was off. And so I checked my, I was sitting there and like, I was supposed to wait for the lab. Like the first appointment wasn't for a while. So I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I should check my appointment thing that she sent me in my like uh, confirmation. So I checked and it was a, like a completely different address than I had gone to. And I was like, what the hell, what did I do? And it was the original like urgent care that I've been to many, many times or not many times, but like, I don't know, twice. So I was like, well, it's really close. I'm just gonna go there. So I just went there and I did it all over again. <laughs> so I went to a second urgent care. Cause I also wasn't like, I wasn't hundred percent on the guy's opinion. Not that he was necessarily, not that he ended up being wrong about anything necessarily, but I just wasn't like, I, I don't know, it felt serious. And the nurse that I spoke to on the phone who even like told me to go to urgent care seemed concerned, extra concerned. So I was like, I might as well, I might as well just go to another urgent care. And this one was a little bit more robust. They did like extra tests. They like did an EKG and well, they actually did test. The first guy just asked me questions and looked at some of my recent test results. Um, they did an EKG, I took a chest X-ray, which by the way, thank God for health insurance. Like, I'm sorry, I spent my entire life not having it. So once I had it, I was like, I'm doing everything. And it's just been such a, like the ER visit, if you're admitted on the insurance that I have, if you're admitted, you don't pay anything. That's incredible. <laughs> it's like an emergency room visit can be so expensive for like a health, it, whatever. It's just fucking crazy. Anyway, that's actually really nice. Just saying, like the formula is actually very nice. I thought it was gonna be, I thought it was gonna be really thick, but it's actually quite nice. I like it. Um, anyway, so with the second urgent care, kind of ended up getting the same, not the same, slightly different, like they, it was more, it was a little, like I said, more robust. They actually did like some tests and stuff, but they ended up kind of giving me like a similar um, diagnosis, I guess, to the first guy. So I was like, okay, peace of mind, a little bit of peace of mind here. But the woman said, if your symptoms get worse, which I haven't really explained, um, if your symptoms get worse, you should absolutely go to the ER. And I was like, Okay. So I had been experiencing this chest tightness, especially when I breathed in deep, it felt like a pressure, like a tightness on my chest, not on the left side where my heart is, but on the like center right a little bit. And then after I started experiencing that chest tightness, this all happened for a week before I went to urgent care um, or ended up in the emergency room. I had these like kind of dizzy spells where I felt like I was gonna pass out. Like I got really lightheaded and I, that was concerning. <laughs> so anyway, I've had panic attacks in the past and they've never felt like that. Like I've never had that specific feeling. I've never had chest tightness. I've never like had that lightheadedness. I guess you could like, I guess you could decide, describe what I experience as like lightheadedness, but it's a little bit more like um, when like the world zooms out and then that like inner something horrible is about to happen. Like it's literally like a, I don't know the difference between a panic attack and an anxiety attack to be completely honest. So like, I don't know, it could be one of one of those and I don't really know the details, um, but it, it wasn't that, it wasn't that. And I kept being honest with everybody that I spoke to. I was like, I do experience this stuff. Like I do have anxiety, I do experience panic attacks. So like the reason I'm here is that it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> Not trying to waste your time. So the next morning after urgent care, uh, 
I started experiencing it more. Like I got, I was at the, uh, I was at the coffee maker just making some espresso. And all of a sudden I started getting like really, really lightheaded. Like I was gonna pass out again and I, and it felt, I would also get these like heart flutters, like palpitations, um, which isn't like unique to me. I've had that throughout my life, but it, it has, again, never, never gone with these other things. So I started freaking out. And I just went to my boyfriend and I was like, I, let's just like, let go to the ER. Cause I'm not trying to fuck with this. You know, like what if it's a blood clot? Like, I don't, like, I don't know. I had a friend who got a blood clot when she was like 18 years old and everybody kept telling her that she, it was anxiety. And then she ended up having a fucking blood clot in her lung. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like not trying to, not trying to uh, take any fucking risks here. Um, so we went and it was, you know, one of the most inundated ERs in the city. So it took, I think I was there for like eight hours total. It was very, it was crazy. But they did like, they do all the tests immediately based on your like symptoms. So they did another EKG, which they don't tell you anything, which is a little frustrating. But I also get it because uh, they're like taking people in at like based on um, severity. It's the emergency room. Like there are people who like, there was some guy who was like passing a kidney stone and like screaming at the top of his lungs. When we first got there, there was a um, woman giving birth and she just kept screaming, help me. And it's crowning. And I was like, that was not good for my anxiety. I had, I had one of those like, I'm about to pass out things right after that happened. Cause it was just like, you know, they're just like in a room full of people and there's this woman screaming that like her baby's coming right now and please help me. And we were all like, ah, it was horrifying. They like did an EKG again, took my vitals, obviously, took some blood, blah, blah, blah. I waited forever and ever and ever. Thankfully my boyfriend was there with me the whole time. And there was a famous person sitting next to us, which was kind of cool. I'm obviously not gonna tell you who it was cause like privacy, but that was kind of interesting. <laughs> that's just like, that's like such a weird, it's just like such a weird LA experience you know, going to the emergency room and then seeing like a famous person. It was just like weird. Um, but anyway, so then like I, I got in and like they took more blood, which I I hate ever since. I don't know if I got it, if I told you, I feel like I did tell the story at some point that one of the like tw two times ago, two like doctor's appointments ago, I was having my blood drawn and the woman, like the needle slipped out of my vein. Sorry if this like grosses anybody out, I'm talking about needles and blood. Um, the needle slipped out of my vein and she like, instead of just taking the needle out of my arm, she just kept like digging it in my arm. And I was like sitting there for a while. and like, I don't love getting my like blood drawn. I'm not like horrible with it. I usually just look away and I'm fine. I don't, I don't really mind the fact that it hurts or it, like if it, if it does. So like, I've never up until that point, I had never really had a problem with it. And then she says, like, she's like, she's like messing around and I'm like, what is taking so long? And then she says, oh, the needle slipped out of the vein. And I was just like, okay. And my, my default, anytime I'm in any kind of like situation, doesn't matter what it is. Um, I'm desperately trying not to tell people how uncomfortable or like anxious I am in that moment, which I've been recently trying to, to change <laughs> because of that situation. So I'm like trying so hard to like hold it together, but she's like freaking me out. Like I can feel the vein moving around my arm. I mean, the needle. And that went on for like a good two or three minutes. And then finally, all of a sudden, I just got hit with this wave of like, I'm gonna pass out. Like the whole room went like in daggers, like zoomed out, like in daggers. And I like got super lightheaded and I felt like I have no control over my body. I'm about to pass out, which I've never experienced before. So that was horrifying. And I told her, I was like, oh, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> um, and what I think something that like kind of bothers me when it comes to like nurses and healthcare people is that they're so used to, I think they're so used to people who like freak out over those kinds of things that they kind of write it off a little bit. So she like, she stopped, thankfully. She like pulled the needle out and then she went and she got me some water, which was very nice. But then she goes, Oh, you, so you have a problem with needles. And I was just like, not until right fucking now, bitch. <laughs> like, not until right, right, not until you were digging a needle around in my arm. Like I was completely fine. So that was, it's a little, you know, it's a little annoying. So that kind of scarred me. And then the last time that I, this was, which was recently like a couple months ago, I went to, I went for like my yearly checkup or whatever. And I told the girl, who's very nice, by the way, both of them were nice, um, but this last girl was very, very nice. 
And I told her, like when it came to the blood drawing thing, she, I think she asked the same question, like, are you okay with like having your blood drawn? And I was like, I typically am, but for my peace of mind, I just have to tell you, <laughs> this was my experience last time. And I was like, literally just for my peace of mind, if that happens, please just take the needle out. Like, I just need to know that I told you this. So I think, and I, that was a mistake. I think that telling her that the needle slipped out of my vein or that the woman had a hard time with the vein, she took that as like this girl's veins, I don't know, are pushing out needles. I don't know how she took it, but she like took the needle and like jammed it into my arm. And I was like, and it hurt, it hurt when it happened. And I was just kind of like, okay. And then it took like, I, I got, like she hit a nerve essentially when she did that. And I asked my nurse friend, luckily one of my best friends is a nurse. So I'm always asking her like questions about this stuff. Asked my nurse friend, she was like, unfortunately this happens all the time and like, it'll get better. Because like, I couldn't pick up like our, like a half gallon of milk. <laughs> like my arm was dead. And for some reason I let them do it in my right arm, which is my fucking arm that I use for everything. So that was stupid, but. So those were my last two like experiences. So that's what like a month to like go back to normal. And it's still like twinges if I like bend my arm all the way, which like, whatever, it's fine. Like I'm getting better, it's, it's fine. But like, those were my last two experiences with um, needles. So the reason that I told you those stories <laughs> is because when they took my blood like a million times in the ER, I think it was the second time, cause the first time they did it, the guy was like, again, he was really rough, it hurt. I still have like a little bit of a bruise here, um, but it was fine, you know, like it, it was fine. Again, I'm not that bad with it. I just like, now I have this anxiety around um, that woman digging the needle in my arm. So the second time they said they were gonna take blood, I was like, oh my God. And I'm already like really anxious. I already had, after this lady's having, like giving, a, giving birth right in front of me, um, it's already, already a little bit on edge, a little, a little on edge. So they came in and they said they had to take more blood once I was like in the, in the ER actually admitted and like sitting on a bed or whatever. <sighs> and I like had a straight up panic attack. Cause, oh no, cause he took my, so he took my, so okay. So I got my blood drawn. Then they took my blood again when I was sitting on the thing. And then he came back and he was like, Oh no, wait, did they? I can't remember actually how many times I did it now. Maybe he just did it the once, but I, I had a panic attack while he was doing it, <laughs> which was not enjoyable. I just like couldn't breathe and I started like freaking out. So yeah, now after those experiences, now I just have so much anxiety around needles. Um, and he put an IV in my arm and he was like, see, we'll just do this. We'll just put an IV in your arm in case we need to take more blood. That way we don't have to poke you again. And at the IV, I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck. I don't fuck with an IV in my arm. Having that thing in my arm and seeing the little blood in the tube, turns out I don't fuck with it. I don't fuck with it. <laughs> I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Um, yeah, so I had to like, I was keeping my arm like still the entire time, like straight. And I like couldn't look at it. I was just like, did not like, did not like that. Uh, and then they didn't end up taking blood again. <laughs> so I didn't even need the IV, which was whatever. I, whatever, I'm not um, judging them. Um, I understood. I understood why they did it. And to be completely honest, everyone in the ER, um, like once you get in, we're, they were all amazing, like so nice and so helpful and patient. Uh, so it was just like a good experience overall. But yeah, anyway, so basically what ended up happening to wrap it all up. So there's a little bit of um, closure to the story. Uh, I mentioned in the video where I talk, uh, talked about cutting out sugar that my that I've been on depression medication for a long time and that it had lost its effectiveness and that I was kind of like trying to figure out like what do I do do I like up it or how do I how do I navigate this situation so my doctor and I the last time I saw him decided to increase it and basically most likely the increase was a little too much too quickly and it kind of just like raised my adrenaline which kicked up my anxiety. And that's probably what is causing the chest tightness because I have found that the tightness and also those dizzy spells have been very like linked to me feeling anxious after the ER and I've spoken, and ha after that I had spoken to like three different doctors who essentially said the same thing. And they took all these tests and all of my like tests 
as far as my physical health were good. I had like, I had less anxiety around it. So I haven't really experienced any of those dizzy spells since. So I think it's all just kind of like related. Um, so I spoke to my doctor yesterday about lowering my um, medication dosage. So we'll see if that makes a difference. <sighs> so anyway, hopefully that does it. But um, my doctor said that he wanted me to wear like a, like a heart monitor thing for like a week so that I can monitor my heart for a week and just see, I don't know, I guess just monitor it for a week. For whatever reason, even though they're all through the same like network, he couldn't see the EKG that I got done at the urgent care. Um, honestly, I think I'm gonna change my doctor because I was a little like, I don't know, I kind of had to press him a bit to like lower my meds which seemed like such a obvious, like, it's the only thing that's changed in my life. <laughs> um, and like three different other doctors that I spoke to said that it could very likely be the cause of what I was feeling. Um, so why not just like lower it a little bit, you know? And he was a little like, he was a little like, oh, I think you should just wear this heart monitor. And I was like, why don't we just fucking do both, bro? So I think I'm gonna switch my doctor because I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Recently, I feel like he's just gotten like, older and curmudgeon-y. I don't know. He's like set in his ways. I feel like he was, I feel like I got the vibe. I don't know if this is for sure, but I got the vibe that he, that he like wanted to be the one to tell me and he didn't like that I was like telling him what other doctors said, which was kind of strange. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna change it. But anyway, so after that, so that all happened, let's see. I went to urgent care Thursday, last Thursday. Lost the entire day because you know how that goes. Getting there, waiting, going in, realizing you're at the wrong urgent care after going to like walking to the other lab and waiting there, going to the next urgent care, waiting, which they didn't make me wait that long. Going in, getting, you know what I mean? Like it's all, it's a whole thing. And then the next, the following day I was at the ER for eight hours. So again, lost essentially the whole day. And then I tried to just chill for like the rest of the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, I tried to just like chill as much as I possibly could because Beyonce, Renaissance tour, Monday, her birthday, September 4th, I was going. That wasn't going to like, that wasn't gonna not happen. When I was at the, um, the ER, I mean, to be completely honest with you, I was freaking out and I was like, please be healthy, please be healthy, um, duh. But I was also, there was like something in the back of my mind that was just like, you can't miss Beyonce, you can't. You can't do it, you can't miss it. So yeah, I didn't. Oh, that's what it was, Sunday night. So yeah, Saturday I relaxed, Sunday night. Uh, I had a little bit of a panic attack when we were like on our way to go see Oppenheimer, which was excellent by the way, I fucking loved it. Excellent movie, highly recommend. Ziva's just running around right now and she's so fluffy. You know when their tails get all fluffy and they look like a raccoon? Buddy, what are you doing? You being a troublemaker? Um, I was just the whole time I was going because I know that Christopher Nolan likes to, he likes to have a constant score. He likes to play with like the uncomfortability of the score and like what it does to you and like with the quick cuts and stuff, like I understand that that's what he does as a director. I was just like so anxious. And I, I was really tempted to be like, maybe we just shouldn't go to this movie tonight, but um, I really wanted to see it. And it had taken forever for us to be able to like get tickets to see it in 70 millimeter and IMAX. And then we finally, so we finally had it. Anyway, we went and luckily it was actually, like I didn't feel anxiety at all through the entire time, except for leading up to it. I had a panic attack in the car. Um, I dropped my Fix Plus. But it was fine, it was fine and a very good movie. But like the weekend, I wasn't able to just like relax essentially because like what I really should have been doing was just like relaxing as hard as I possibly could before Beyonce so that I could be ready for that. Um, Cause I get anxiety about no matter, like just leaving my house, you know? So that was a whole thing. What am I doing? This is why I don't understand how um, I watch like Samantha. Sam, I don't understand how you do this. You like talk so eloquently and clearly and thoughtfully while you're doing your makeup. I can't focus on two things at once. I just can't do it. I can do it with everything else, but not this. This is gonna be an hour and a half of me like just talking. 
hope hope that you want to listen. It's kind of a sick color, but I know these are really dewy. So I went to Beyonce. I went to Beyonce. Mm. I went to Beyonce at SoFi. Um, it was fucking incredible. It was everything. It was it was so much more than what I. I don't know. I guess I didn't know necessarily what to expect. I think I became like a solidified fan after Lemonade, when Lemonade came out. Cause like, don't get me wrong. I've been listening. I mean, hello, I was born in 1990. I've been listening to like Destiny's Child, Beyonce since essentially birth. I'm not really like a stan of anybody, but if I had to choose someone, I think it would be Beyonce. <laughs> it was the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my entire life. My jaw was on the floor the whole time. Like. Gabby, Gabby Alvarez, um, a lot of you guys know her because she's been on my channel or you follow her already. She um, came with me and she was like, I don't think I've ever seen you so happy in your entire life. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I've ever been so like just speechless, speechless, speechless. We were on the floor. We were on the floor. It was amazing. It was amazing. I've just been, um, re-watching like the videos that I took from the concert because I'm like, I want to relive this for the rest of my, I don't know how I'm supposed to go back to real life. I don't understand. Truly, I don't understand. And yeah, I'm literally listening to um, Renaissance right now. What is this? Okay, I'm gonna use this little guy from Kosa. Actually, you know what? I, don't, I need to save the little guy. These little guys from Kosas are so good. I mean, they're so tiny. Look, look at how tiny it is. He's so tiny. Look how tiny. This is the tiniest thing you've ever seen. Tiny. So I have the regular brow pencils. I'm gonna use taupe to just like sculpt. Um, yeah, it was that was it was just so wild. It was wild. We got there like pretty early. Well, no, I mean like we got there like after the like after the doors opened. I think doors opened at like six. We got there around like six fifteen, six twenty maybe, because we were worried about traffic, which there was like none. Um, obviously it was crazy like around the stadium, but we had my boyfriend drop us off and he works around there. So he, he, he knew the lay of the land, which was very helpful because I was stressed about that. I don't even, I, yeah, I just don't have any words for it. There were so many celebrities there, which was also just like kind of funny. Like we saw most of the car, not most of the Kardashians. We saw Kim and Chloe and Chris, they walked by us to like go to their like VIP celebrity spot. And there was this bald dude with them. And I was like, who the fuck is a bald guy? And like later I saw photos and it was Jeff Bezos. And I was like, oh, <laughs> literally I was like, who's that bald guy? It must just be some like rich dude. <laughs> it was a rich dude. Timothy Chalamet and Kylie Jenner are dating. Very interesting. I like didn't know how I, I was like, okay. Didn't, definitely didn't see that coming. I mean, like, all the power to you, you know? Like, I saw videos of them. They looked cute. I mean, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, just not, not a, not, if I were a matchmaker, wouldn't have thought to put them together, but I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Everyone looked amazing. By the way, everyone's outfits were incredible. There was this girl who was sitting in front of us, like a couple rows, who was wearing this, like, renaissance inspired look she was wearing this like incredible like um structured bodysuit with tights i didn't see her shoes because there were like chairs in front of us and she had this like hat that was like draped with like this um i don't know fabric and it was like on the like literally like super tilt she looked fabulous she was like all red it was amazing that was one of my favorite things was seeing what everyone was wearing. Cause everyone, like, it was so fun to see how everybody would like interpret the themes, you know? And obviously like silver, silver was a big one. That was so much fun. I like don't, I just don't have any words for it. I wish I could just like put all of the videos that I took up, but I think it would just like get copyright striked. I'm assuming, I don't know. Because like, obviously my channel is monetized. Where is my primer? Yeah, her vocals are unmatched. Like the singing, I, I don't even, I can't even, I mean, you, just otherworldly. Otherworldly, not of this world. There's a reason that people make such a big deal about Beyonce. And all of it was like, never doubted for me, but 100% solidified by that concert. Solidified. It was, in, it was incredible, it was incredible. It was something that I will never, ever, ever forget. 
uh, and I'm so glad that I did it. And if anyone ever has the opportunity to see her live, I highly recommend it because even if you're not like a fan, like of the music necessarily, you will be blown away by the talent. Like if that's anything, if you care at all about like, or are impressed at all about by singers, like incredible singers, like fuck. Diana Ross came out and sang happy birthday to her. That was fucking crazy. She brought out Kendrick and his mic didn't work until like halfway through his performance. And that was sad. That was sad. I wasn't super depressed about that. I had, I was very lucky to be able to see him um, at the Super Bowl last year. Was that last year or two years ago now? The one in LA, um, which was awesome. That was amazing. So anyway, I haven't been filming <laughs> like at all. That's not true. I'm working on some like collaboration stuff, um, but YouTube, I just like haven't, I just haven't had the energy. I haven't had the energy since like Ziva got sick and then I had this whole si situation and I really just wanted to like shut off and enjoy. I really needed that concert. I really needed it. I needed it. Like it felt like it did something for my soul, you know? <sighs> I guess I'll set with some powder. Oh, I saw some of you guys. I don't know. Um, I never ask like where people are following me, if the, where they know me from, if it's from YouTube or like Instagram, because I was like very much on Instagram before YouTube. So a lot of people know me from just like that, or if they've like, I don't know, maybe watch me on TikTok. I have no idea. So I don't know where, if, if any of you were seeing this, but all the people who came up and said, hello, you all looked amazing. And you were all so fucking cute. Everybody was so sweet, like so nice. It was like such a, um, hold on, I have to set my under eyes first before I like talk to you. <laughs> I like it, I like that foundation. I haven't really tried much from Euphoria, but it was pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, everybody was so nice. There was such a sense of community there. Like everyone was complimenting each other's outfits. It was just like such a cool, it was so fun to see like makeup, hair, like what just like accessories. It was so cool to see how, how people were dressed. It was just like such a good experience. I'm so glad that I went. Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. I don't know, I don't know, okay? I don't know how to get back to real life after all that. I just don't. I didn't go with a brand, by the way, just so everybody knows, I don't know. Not that it matters, but I don't know if it matters. <laughs> Maybe it does. People have, um, people have opinions about like, it's very interesting actually to see like what people's opinions are of like sponsored content, working with brands, going to things with brands. I do kind of feel like my, I feel like I had a lot of those like feelings before I actually started working in this industry. But I think something that I've learned from not just that experience, but from like a lot of things is that like the less you know about something, the easier it is to not trust it or to just hate it for no reason. Um, and when I say no reason, what I really mean is like, not that you don't necessarily have a reason. People don't typically like just hate things for no reason. There's usually a reason before it. It's just, I, what? There's usually a reason behind it. It's just not typically a fair reason. It's usually a reason that doesn't come from having all of the information, if that makes sense. So that's something that I've been like trying, I feel like, for the last three or four years, especially. Oh, Ziva, no, what are you doing? <laughs> Ziva, no. <laughs> She's just, she just, I don't even wanna talk about it. I just can't have any upholstery near these bitches. Anyway, something that I've been really trying to do in the last few years is not form any kind of an opinion about something if I don't really know about it. Because I think, and I think that that's like a kind of a difficult thing to admit to yourself that you don't know about something. It's actually a really hard thing. And I think a lot of people have a hard time admitting it, myself included. Like this is, I, I would say like a relatively new in, in like the grand scheme of my life development. <sighs> but it's like a really important one to like, to understand that you, that you, if you don't know something about some, about like, if you don't know the history, like let's use something like, this is um, a classic one, something that I like talk to people close to me about. If you don't know the history or the meaning behind certain things and you just see those things and you kind of create your own idea 
of what they mean. This conversation is getting so much bigger than fucking sponsored ads or going to a brand, on a brand trip. But I think it's, an, I don't know, I think it's like an important thing. It's been on my mind. If you don't know and you start to create your own little like narrative or, around it, it just almost always goes in a negative direction. And I think that that's probably like a self-preservation, human nature kind of thing. Um, Ziva, why are you being such a troublemaker right now? She gets excited when we talk. If I'm talking, then she's like, I wanna play. <laughs> she's jumping at the door to try and open my closet. I don't know, I, don't, I, think, I think it's like, a, it's like a natural reaction. It's like a human nature thing. It's not like a necessarily, no, I think it's definitely not a conscious negative or mean thing. I think it usually comes from something, it comes from somewhere. <sighs> and you can't change it unless you like know that you're doing it which is a very difficult thing to like figure out on your own. You usually need to like at least hear people talk about that kind of thing so that you can like, like for example, a podcast where you talk, where people are talking about like their own self-reflection and then you can kind of like reflect on yourself to recognize that you are doing those same things, but just changing those things on your own without any other like outside like criticism or, or perspective, I guess is almost impossible, you know? Cause like, how can you even know that you're doing something that like isn't necessarily wrong, but probably isn't beneficial to you, you know? I, I like truly believe that, that like having a negative view of something as a default is just, a, it's just, it's just a detriment to yourself. Cause I used to be so negative and I'm such a positive bitch now about other things, not really myself. I'm still working on that one, but you know, progress, baby steps. There's a video that I, um, that I've been, I've, I think I've filmed it three times. <laughs> and I just never, I never upload it. I don't know why there've been like a couple of, um, there are like a few different reasons why, but it was, it was essentially supposed to be a video where I'm, <laughs> what did you just do? Why did you just hop like a bunny? You're being very distracting right now. Hold on, there's a hair on my chin that's very tickly. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, it's the video about, it was supposed to be like our relate, a video about our relationship with that girl. I just like, I have a lot of opinions about it because I don't think that they're like, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's like necessarily good or necessarily bad. I think it's a combination of the two, which I think is true of like most things. There is no like just good or bad. Like there just isn't. Or at least if the thing itself is bad or the thing itself is good, the situations and reasoning behind them vary, I guess. Cause like obviously like you shouldn't kill people, but like then it comes down to like the whole conversation of like, well, what if they're threatening your life or like whatever. I'm not trying to get into all of that, okay? I just know that like someone's gonna make a comment about that. Cause something that's really frustrating about YouTube is that when you're having a conversation or when you're trying to work something out in real time, which is what's happening right now, I didn't plan any of this stuff. <laughs> um, you can't possibly talk about everything or, or caveat everything. So then people love to point out what you didn't mention, what you didn't say, as if it was a conscious thing, which most of the time it's not. Anyway, my kind of like conclusion when I was thinking about that girl, like being that girl, or like seeing that girl and wanting to be that girl, is that I think that the good that comes out of it is that like there are certain things that you might not want to do, might not have had any ideas to do or to change or to try and like um, challenge yourself. Like, cause my, my, like the thing that pops into my head when I think of like that girl being that girl, is like waking up at 5 a.m. and like drinking your green juice and like going to the gym or something. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that because even if that isn't, doesn't end up being something that like is realistic for you as a person, like maybe you are a night owl and it just doesn't like, that's just not how you operate. There isn't really anything wrong with saying, I'm gonna try this thing and see how it works for me. And if it doesn't, then like, whatever. Where the negative comes in is, the comparison and then the negative feelings um, around like not being that person 
and I don't really know. It's it's very difficult. I think those are difficult difficult things for people to balance, myself included. Cause like if we did bring it back to Beyonce really quick, <laughs> you know, a lot of like her musical lyrics have ego in them, pretty high ego, which in my personal opinion, having just seen her live and witnessed her talent and work, <laughs> well deserved, more than well deserved. However, I think that people can like look at someone like Beyonce and be like, she is this unattainable example of like talent and hard work and and just like achievement in general, which like, I think she is all of those things, <laughs> but then feel bad about themselves for that and for not being that exactly. But then on the other hand, a lot of her lyrics, like when you're singing a song, you are singing the lyrics, you know what I mean? So in that sense, a lot of her lyrics are kind of like an ant become an anthem for a person who is trying, who wants to feel confident and like motivated who might not otherwise, if they didn't have that somewhere else, you know? This brow won't stay for some reason. I don't know, I just always kind of end up feeling like fascinated by those, like the yin and yang of those kinds of things. And I guess how they like influence people very differently. By the way, I've gone back to um, like a classic nose contour because I just decided that what I was doing wasn't doing it for me. I told you I'd keep you posted on that. <laughs> I don't think it was working. So I'm going back to this and I'm changing up products and brushes to see if it makes a difference. And you know what? It fucking doesn't. Look at that. It doesn't. I just have a crooked, weird nose that's impossible to contour. And no matter what I do, it looks stupid. <laughs> see? That's where the negativity is. It's just around me, not other people. The makeup that I wore to the Beyonce concert, I just like sat, I don't know why I didn't think about it more. I had like some ideas in my head and then I just started going and it just like turned into something completely different. And like for a split second, I was like, wow, I hate what I'm doing right now. I'm sure that like everyone has those moments where you're like doing your makeup and you're like, wait, what the hell is happening right now? <laughs> this is not going the way that I, had planned. Sometimes you just have to like kind of push through it because I think it ended up looking like amazing. I got a lot of compliments on it. So I'm actually, I ended up being happy with the way that it turned out. Okay, they're a little uneven, but I think those are some sexy brows. Okay, I don't know what to do with for my eyes. I think I'm just gonna do something like, um, kind of rock star-ish. Black, like black rimmed smoky eye or something. That's just what I feel in my soul. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do like a kind of smoky, smoky, black smoky eye type situation. Type situation. I'm gonna use the Maybelline Master Precise Skinny Blah Blah Blah. It's just so creamy and coal like. I'm gonna put this in my waterline and then do some smoke. I love this eyeliner, it's so good. Sometimes I really love starting with my lower lash line and then just figuring out like how to balance it on the top. So no additional product. I just like put that down and then dragged it around the rest of my face. <laughs> there was a girl at the, um, when we were at the emergency room, I don't know, I don't know what her affliction was, so I can't judge it, but you know, we're at the emergency room. They're doing their best. They got women coming in with a baby's head hanging out of their fucking vagina. You know what I mean? Like, it was a lot. Um, they're busy. They're busy. They got shit going on. And this girl was, uh, went up to the desk and was just like, she'd been there for like an hour and she was just like crying. And she was like, I've been here longer than anyone else. And they were like, that is absolutely not true. I think at that point we'd been there for about four hours, four or five hours maybe. And it was just like, I don't know. I think people kind of don't really understand what the emergency room is. Like the emergency room is not for a stomach ache. The emergency room is for the dude who was passing a kidney stone or the woman whose baby's head is falling out of her body. You know what I mean? Like that's what the emergency room is for. <laughs> like you have to kind of keep these things in perspective. I actually think I heard I think I heard her because we recognized her voice. I won't say what she was dealing with because like, I'm not trying to put that out there, but it wasn't 
emergency room required, I guess you could say. It was kind of funny when they came back and they like the doctor, when I finally spoke to the doctor, cause I spoke to like a bunch of different people. I speak to like PAs, random nurses taking your like blood and stuff. And then I finally spoke to the doctor when like they had looked at my charts and decided that I wasn't gonna die, which was nice. Um, he came back, he was very nice, very understanding. And um, I think they expect, like they expect that people who are experiencing anxiety, like saying, by, like by like telling people, like I think that this is just like a, it's a, it's a neurological thing that's happening um, that is causing these symptoms for you. Not like you, you don't have like a heart attack or what you're not having a heart attack. I think they expect people to be like, no, but it's so physical, you know, like I'm having a heart attack or whatever, which like to me, I was so relieved. I was like, please just be like a neurological thing. <laughs> You know, like I'm not trying to have a blood clot right now. I really just, I would tell me it's anxiety, please. Cause when he said that he was like, I hate saying that because you know, it can be really disappointing when you're blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. This is what I was hoping for. <laughs> like, thank God, thank God. It's not like, you know, obviously I'm young. I didn't think I was having a heart attack but I, I was very nervous about potentially a blood clot. You never know when that kind of thing is gonna happen. That's like my biggest fear. Not specifically blood clots, but like, I don't know, like an aneurysm or something. That's so fucking terrifying. It just hits you out of nowhere, you know? I don't know how well you guys can um, relate to this, but when I haven't spoken, I know I'm not talking to like, I'm not like interacting with a person right now. I'm talking to myself. But when I haven't spoken to anybody in a really long time, and then I start talking, like if I haven't filmed YouTube, I get so exhausted. <laughs> Uh, and I'm, I'm hitting that, I'm hitting that wall right now, currently. I am so tired right now. I'm just like, wow, I wanna go to bed. I wanna go to bed. Uh, but I can't, I got stuff I gotta do, dude. Life, you know what I mean? Um, one of my favorite people to see and catch up with is Sarah, who does my hair color. Cause we only see each other like so often, you know? Um, and she's like one of my favorite people to catch up with. She always has the most ridiculous stories. Like I love her stories, <laughs> but like at, literally every single time I see her, I think it's like just us talking and laughing and like catching up. And then like, I don't know, the last third of the appointment, I'm just dead, completely dead. I'm just like, I need a nap. Like I need a nap right now. Like catching up is just like exhausting. I don't know, maybe I'm just, I mean, I know I'm extra antisocial, but maybe I'm just like very, very, very antisocial, even even more so than I thought. People who um, like recharge by being around like friends and partying and stuff, like that's how my boyfriend is. He like has to like go and be around friends and stuff. Not that he doesn't like alone time too, but I'm the complete opposite. That I need everyone to get the fuck out and leave me alone or else I'm gonna go crazy. Should I do anything for like my lid? No, let's just leave it. Typically I would do something to like my crease, but I don't want it to get too, like I want it to be like a little like edgy rock star vibes. I don't want it to get too polished. I like this side better, God damn it. Ugh, whatever. I really need to wash my hair. I'm honestly pushing it a little bit. <laughs> I'm pushing it a little far today. Wingoss, classic, waterproof, so good, the blackest. I would say when it comes to waterproof mascaras, Clio is my fave for like everyday, you know? It's like my everyday waterproof mascara. Ooh, but for glam, Wingoss, that's a good one. I'm gonna use the Make Beauty mascara for my lower lashes. Not that it matters, you won't be able to see it. Uh, all right guys, I'm gonna stop now because this has been a really long chat for me and I'm emotionally raw. <laughs> I am though. Um, and also just like, I'm tired. I'm fucking tired, dude. Uh, but I hope that you enjoyed hanging with me while I just like randomly like updated you on some very personal details in my life and also some random shit that's been on my mind. Yeah, that's it, that's all I've got. I don't know, I'm tired, I'm tired. I'm sorry that I like fell off. 
the schedule, but without, especially without like any, but like, you know what I mean? Health shit happens, life happens. And I really just, my first thought, love you. But my first thought is never to take to the internet and tell people what's going on. My first thing is like talking to my boyfriend or like my family <laughs> or my friends and keeping them apprised of like what's happening in my life. So I'll always tell you eventually. But yeah, after this week, cause I just have, I've had a lot of other work that I'm doing outside of like specifically YouTube. So after this week, I will be back on track. And I've been uploading Sundays and Wednesdays, just so you guys know. I also think that I'm gonna start, um, because I know a lot of people, I don't know, it's like notification thing. It's like very annoying, but like YouTube is terrible about like showing you stuff that you're actually subscribed to that you wanna see. Um, I think I'm gonna start doing the, the premiere feature. So hopefully that will like help you guys get the notification for when a video is going up. And like another thing apparently that you can do when you do that, I've only done it once, but like another thing you can do is like have a live chat going while it premieres. So when it first goes up, um, I'll be in the chat. So like, for instance, usually I'm like in, I'm responding to comments in the first hour, but this way it's like a, it's like a running chat where we can all, talk in real time. So I think I'm gonna do that with this video. I'll probably start doing that. And if it's helpful for you guys, or if you like enjoy the chat feature where we can like talk while the video is playing, uh, let me know. But regardless, after the video is done playing, cause typically I don't, you know, go over like 20, well, this might be a long one, but um, I was gonna say they're usually like 20 minutes. I will be responding to comments normally, you know, so. And I think you can like leave up the chat replay in case anybody wants to see like what we talked about, so. I think that's gonna be my new situation. Uh, and I realize I'm not wearing a lip. I have to do something with a lip, so I'm gonna go. But I am fine. <laughs> I'm here. I'm gonna be back. And I hope that you're doing well. And that's all I got. I'll see you in the next one.